Okay, hello everybody, I'm Christoph Irwin, Positive Energy. We are a building science consulting shop in Austin, Texas, and I think a lot of you know we do mechanical design, partly in recognition to the fact that that's where building science needs to evolve. Now, in the category of mechanical design, we've been talking about, for a long time, I think you've been hearing us talk about radiant heating and cooling, using things like, uh, truisms like, um, air conditioning is aptly named. It is not the same as occupant conditioning. And for taking that a little bit deeper, you right now aren't experiencing the air temperature if you're in an indoor space. You're not experiencing the air temperature directly, or outdoors, frankly, for that matter. What you experience, what I experience directly right now is whether my body's gaining or losing heat. Now, if we cut to an infrared image, you can see that my skin, my hands are hot. What does that mean, hot? When you see an infrared image and it looks red, what you're seeing, all that the infrared camera sees, is long wave infrared. My skin's at like something like 290 degrees Kelvin, so it's radiating. It's radiating long wave infrared, and that is one of the primary ways that the body loses heat. So hot summer Austin, Texas, nice hot window radiating to me. As long as my body can shed radiation to an adjacent building surface, I can maintain thermal equilibrium. So that's what we have. So this all starts with the idea of design around people. A good building follows. So again, infrared image, I'm hot, radiating to this cold ceiling. I think it's like dark blue, even black in the image behind me. And that's the front end. That's the first step in a radiant cooling system. The heat in my body radiates out, goes into the ceiling, and from there it couples into uh, water. So what we're seeing here, this serpentine pattern, this is PERT, this is a type of PEX, the, um, water pipe that's in the ceiling. Wow, you can really feel it, it's nice and cold. So this ceiling, which is at around 67, 68 degrees, is much cooler than my head, my body, my hands, surface temperature of my body is more like 90 degrees. So I'm radiating to it. Once it gets up there, I'm gonna show you this here. This is a cutaway of this. This is a pre-manufactured hydronic radiant heating or cooling panel. And what we see is the basic working components of it are A, sheetrock. This can have whatever finish we want. You know, Venetian plaster, not excluded. Behind that is this layer of thick aluminum. That is to spread the heat or the cool out from this PEX pipe. So this PEX pipe is going in a serpentine pattern, the same thing as we saw from the ceiling. So hot person, radiating R is only a half, down to the aluminum. Aluminum, in cooling mode, the aluminum is collecting the heat, sending it to the PEX, the PEX is cold, it gets warm, and it takes the heat out of the building, out of the room. We'll follow that path shortly. What we also see, if you look at it in section, is you have an inch and a half, very convenient, two by four width, of EPS styrofoam and that's expanded polyurethane foam or styrofoam and then we have the aluminum with the packs embedded in it and then the sheetrock so this will go on the ceiling like this. So right here let me take a minute and point out something that's important for a radiant cooling application particularly in a humid climate like Austin, Texas. What we have here is thermal isolation of the thermally active surface from the structure, from the framing, right? When people hear radiant, they, frankly, when they say radiant, the first thing they think of is radiant heating, and they think of radiant heated slabs. Those are very long thermal time constants. If I heat up a slab, I cannot change its temperature very quickly. That could be a big problem in a situation where I'm cooling a ceiling, and if someone opens that window and lets the outdoor conditions in, I wanna make sure I stay above dew point. We'll talk about that in a minute. That does happen here. But the reason that can happen here is this is pulling the heat out of the space, it goes through this pipe, water pipe, and I can control this surface temperature basically instantaneously on a moment by moment basis. I can add less cooling, <laughs> I can absorb less heat or more heat to change this panel temperature and to keep this surface above dew point. So what we have here is cold water coming in, supply water coming in, return water coming out, we follow it. Now this, this is an important little subtlety here. 
This is a laser etched image. This is not an ink based graphic here. This will not bleed through any finishes, but cold water comes in, goes through the serpentine, goes through the serpentine, comes back and goes out. So in, out. Here I am, hot person, radiating to this cold ceiling. My skin's around 90 degrees, the ceiling's around 70 degrees. What we have is the heat comes in to the panel, goes through the sheetrock, gets absorbed by this serpentine pattern. The water flow is basically in, through the serpentine, across, through the serpentine, and out. And it's repeating that throughout these panels. So the business end of this is I'm hot, the heat from me goes into the ceiling and ends up in the return pipe, supply return. So we end up following this return pipe out of the building here. So here's that return pipe. We're in the manifold closet now. It's coming down, down, down. I apologize, it's right here. So it's right here. So basically what we have is here's that return carrying the heat. It goes out here and it goes back down. Here we have our actuator. This is our valve. So on this loop, right, I have supply in, return out, and if the return out is closed, the supply in will stop, just like when you turn your faucet on into sink, right? So this valve controls the flow of heating and cooling water out. So the heat is now going out here. So keep in mind, manifold, important part of a control system. This could be, we have four rooms in our office, so we have four zones. It could be as multiple zones. Zones could be radiant panels. They could be forced air panels. We could have our wine room on a zone. We could have a loop that's surrounding my swimming pool to absorb heat or shed heat into the pool. The possibilities really just go on and on. So supply of thermally conductive fluid, return of thermally conductive fluid. Here in the summer, cold water in, hot water out. And that's what we have. Now let's go see where these go downstairs. Okay, so this is the return of our hydronic fluid from the upstairs. Remember, this is where the heat has been collected. It's very dense heat. It's coming back in here. This is the supply going this way. So here's our return line coming down here. It's going back into the tank. It also has the ability to go back around for a second lap. So return supply. This is a circulator, fancy name for a pump. Okay, so this is our Belimo mixing valve and basically it'll start in the closed position. So the return water is gonna just do a second lap. What does that mean? That means that upstairs those panels start out at a thermo neutral condition. They're not colder or hotter. The cold is here. So gradually this valve will open that cold water is gonna go up. So that cold water is gonna go up, ready to absorb more heat. So heat absorbing fluid, fluid that has absorbed heat comes over here and goes into the buffer tank. So here's the buffer tank. This separates the source side from the system side. So we had the system upstairs with all the panels. Out here is our source, we'll be talking about that next. The two combine in the buffer tank. This is a really big deal. I'm just gonna to touch on it here today. Basically I have one loop it's going like this, just water in here. Nope, these pipes just end, and then one loop going like that. The reason it's a big deal is because this has 30 gallons of cold water. It's currently at around 60 degrees. So this has 30 gallons of 60 degree water. If there was a massive call for cooling upstairs, we need to send more thermally absorptive fluid up there. We have a lot of it on hand. Meanwhile, the outdoor piece, which we're gonna see now, could just go along at a very you know, measured, energy efficient pace. So separating the source from the system with the buffer tank, which could be bigger. We could tell the source, you only run when I have PV production and I have 80 gallons, 100 gallons of storage in this space. So there's other components, there's another circulator and of course these things change volume when they change temperature. So I have this expansion tank. But the bottom line now is that the heat that came through here is coming out through here and it's going back outside. So let's go look at that. So we have the heat coming in. It goes into this air to water heat pump. This is a space pack three ton unit and it gets shed right here. This is almost a neutral condition. I can barely feel any heat above. And by the way, this is on right now. This is how loud or quiet these things are. So the heat that was absorbed from my body upstairs into the panel, into the fluid, out here into the air. Very similar to these Mitsubishi units behind us, right? Except we're using refrigerant. And that ends the tour. That is the uh, food chain of the heat leaving my body, getting shed into the air. And this all starts from the principle of design around people and a good building follows.